Hello, City of Cheyenne uh, Public Services Committee meeting. Um, anyway, just quick show of hands, just out of curiosity, how many of you are either here to speak uh, about item 18 or 19 today? Okay. Um, well, you know, being that we have a, a rather uh, lengthy uh, agenda today, and I'm glad you're all here, quite honestly. Um, but I'm thinking just, and I'm assuming you all intend to speak individually. Um, so if that is the case, um, I would just ask maybe if, if, if folks could limit their comments to uh, three, three to five minutes. Let's say three minutes today. Um, if that's okay, uh, there obviously will be uh, opportunity to speak again, you know, next Monday night, and then another one of these meetings. So I mean, you you are going to have uh, further opportunities to speak about this, uh, but just in respect of everyone's time today, um, I just want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to uh, to speak. Um, if you do have a phone device, anything like that, if folks are able to shut those off or silence those. Uh, if you're able to, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, that also goes uh, for the folks uh, available online. Um, if you're not uh, speaking, please mute yourself. Um, I believe there is a clipboard going around. If folks want to make sure to sign that and provide who you are and your contact information so we can follow up if you ask for follow-up after the meeting and so we can accurately uh, uh, make sure your information is included in the meeting minutes. If you do intend to come up and speak, please come up to the uh, to the podium. There is a button that that you'll have to push that will allow you to uh, to speak into the microphone again. So, because we record this meeting, um, but identify who you are, if you would. Um, with that, Madam Clerk. First item, please. Number 18, ordinance, second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located southwest of the intersection of Ridge Road and Holland Court. Is there a staff report? And chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom, Planning and Development Director. This is the annexation of a 10.7 acre parcel of land that is located south of Holland Court and west of Ridge Road. The property is located in the unincorporated county right now, and it is immediately to the east of the Crest Ridge subdivision. Uh, the proposed zoning associated with this is NR3. Uh, the developer has indicated that they uh, propose to develop multifamily housing at this location. Um, staff uh, has reviewed uh, this item and looked at the required findings um, that are necessary for annexation and has determined it has met all of the criteria. At the last meeting of the governing body, there was a public hearing that was held. Um, notice was given to all of the residents or the property owners within the annexation area, which is the one, as well as all of the franchise utilities that are affected um, by this annexation. That notice was provided by certified mail. Likewise, there was a zoning notification letter that went out in conjunction with the zoning to all persons owning property within 300 feet of this area proposed for annexation. Uh, this uh, exact annexation is 77% contiguous with the existing city limits, um, and it is uh, adjacent to two city rights of way that are presently within the city limits. Those rights of way are Holland Court on the north and Ridge Road on the east. Um, Step has reviewed this annexation petition and application, and we are in support of the annexation. I'm open for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Uh, any questions from the committee for uh, Mr. Bloom? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave, through you. Mr. Bloom, I, I just want to reiterate, I believe you just stated that this annexation meets all of the state statute requirements. Is that correct? Chair, through you to Council Member Seagrave, yes, it meets all of the statutory criteria for annexation. Thank you. 
further questions uh, from the committee for Mr. Bloom before we uh, ask for a developer report. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Do we have a developer's report? Uh, Chairman, Council Members, Brad Emmons, ABI, uh, agent for the applicant, uh, Bedrock Development LLC. Um, just reiterating what Charles said that we believe this annexation meets the criteria to be annexed into the city. And if it was to be developed, uh, it should be developed within the city and not in the county. Look for your uh, consideration on the annexation. Any questions from the committee for Mr. Emmons? Okay. Um, before I turn to public comment here in the room, do we have any raised hands online, Jennifer? Or Madam Clerk, I should say. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Rennie. Before we go to public comment, I just want to point out, and I want the public to understand, we have two related items. All the emails we've received have been mostly in regard to the development. Um, if they're going to speak on 18, I would like them to speak why or why not we should annex this area and more of the ordinance and zoning is maybe more what they're interested in speaking against. Okay. All right. Um, duly noted. Thank you. Public comment. You don't have to raise your hand, sir. You can just come up to the podium and uh, identify yourself and then we can... There's a there's a button there to light up red, I I believe. If you want to identify that one, we in. Yes, okay, good. Hi, my name is John Cecil, and I live at 3217 Smith Place, which is directly behind this property, which is to the west. And I have lots of concerns, but I'll try to keep these concerns just to the annexation portion of it and and what'll happen with that. So um so I guess. The the probably the the biggest thing is I talked to BOPU this morning on the phone and I called them um, because it was my understanding from the previous meetings where where um, this was denied from the planning meeting um, th this project was denied from them that the all of the um, water and sewer was com completely approved that was my understanding um, we went to the open house last night and found out a little more information which sparked me to be able to i wanted to call a or call uh bop so anyway what they had told me is it's not really they haven't approved it for for a big apartment complex like this what they they still have to do all of the modeling and make sure that it will flow and this is a big monster in in a piece of property that's surrounded by by single family dwellings and so for that to be able to happen um from last night at the meeting they were saying they were they were going to have to tear up part of hall and sewer and rebury it and do some other stuff but no one really knows what the design is and how much will it'll handle and what all they will have to do to replace and upgrade sewer lines to do that to be able to make it all flow um so uh let me see what my other ones are there um traffic i think was another one that pertains that's going to cause with another 207 um homes basically or apartments that's going to cause a lot of traffic there that somebody's going to have to address for both the roads and street lights and stop lights and and all that kind of thing um and I guess, uh, and and the parking issue is going to be another big thing that I think this one, you know, if it does get annexed in, that one and a half spaces per unit just doesn't do it. They're they're going to be parking on the streets in the city park, which I know it'll be annexed. So that's, I'll try to keep it to that. I did want to respond just real quick, Mr. Cecil, if I may. Um, no, those those. Uh, um, those concerns are duly noted uh, in, in my understanding, and I'll let uh, if they need to uh, staff and or Mr. Mr. Emmons uh, respond. But yes, my understanding is all those things, especially uh, with the parking, the traffic and the sewer part, they might have to um, speak on that. But yes, a lot of those things um, 
you know, the traffic in the parking won't necessarily be addressed, you know, in the, in the annexation or with the, the zoning, quite frankly, um, those will be addressed and will be assessed further, Mr. Cecil, through the, uh, the plat process and the site plan process, which is where a lot of those are going to be further assessed. So, again, I know that's no consolation to you, but right. um, they are going to continue working on those things. And, and I'm assuming you've, you've been made aware of that, but I wanted to just state that for the record. Yeah, and, and I just I guess the reason I brought those all up is yeah. because if it gets annexed, those are, I think, things that that are going to apply later on. But there's other micro sure. other concerns that I have that we'll address later. Yes. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment, please. Now's the time for this one, for the annexation. Um, if not, obviously, we have this next number 19. Sir, go ahead and come on up. You don't need to raise your hand. You can just come up to the podium, sir, please. Because I may or may not see you back there waving at me. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I'm Alex Sutton. I live on 3221 Thomas Road. Okay, uh, it's it's my understanding they want to put in a swimming pool. Or are they going to use that swimming pool area for parking? I mean, these are just questions that I kind of have, you know. And... Uh, Okay, if they do put in a swimming pool, uh, I would think it would be better to have it enclosed. This is Wyoming. Ten years down the road, that swimming pool would just be falling apart outside, you know. I'd probably be better for the people that live there, too, you know. And another question I have is I, I take it that they're going to allow pets. They're going to have lots of dogs. Okay, if... The dogs, you get a 200 and some apartment building and you have at least 80, 70, 80% of those people having dogs, you're, you're going to have a lot of uh, crap in the yard. You're going to have a lot of noise. Uh, and then, then they were saying that they were building these apartments for middle income people. I don't think a lot of middle income people would want to live in that that type of environment. I think this would mostly turn out to be low income people living in that area. You know, it's, these are just things that, you know, concerned about, so. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. Do you have any uh, questions or concerns related specifically to whether or not this meets criteria for annexation? Well, the traffic. You know, I, I don't know. Again, those things will be addressed further on in the process yeah. um, as well. Okay. So, All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the further public comment uh, related to the proposed um, annexation on second reading. My name is Roger Alexander. I live at 3212 Holland Court, which is at the northwest corner of the proposed development. Um, I'm going to address two criteria, number two and number eight. Criteria number two is compatibility with nearby properties. I do not believe that's the case with zoning to an NR3. All the properties to the north, west, south, and east are zoned either MR or A1, and all the developments in those four cardinal directions are single-family dwellings. From my property on Holland Court, I cannot see anything but single family homes in any direction. I know there's a, a apartment complex at the Northeast corner of this property, but it's on the other side of Ridge Road and, and it's off a story actually, not Ridge. So it, <clears throat> a 207 unit development surrounded by single family homes is not compatible. The properties in, in the Crestridge subdivision are pretty large. My lot's 11,000 11, square feet, which is a quarter of an acre. So for the purposes of just some figures out here, let's, let's imagine that the average density of single family homes in Crestridge is roughly five homes per acre. That's 9,000 square foot per lot. And assuming an average of four residents per house, that's 20 people per acre in the Crestridge subdivision. The development proposes to have 207 units on 10.7 acres. 
That works out to roughly 19 units per acre. That's four times the existing density of single family homes in the Crestridge subdivision. The units are proposed to run from one to three bedrooms. So once again, for the purposes of illustration, I'm gonna assume three residents per unit, which would work out to 621 additional people in that neighborhood. And that's 621 people on 10.7 acres, which works out to 58 people per acre. That's three times, three times the existing density of people per acre. Based on just those figures, it's hard for me to say that the proposed zone change in development is compatible with the neighboring surrounding properties. The other criteria is number eight, public health, safety, and welfare. Once again, I don't believe that this proposal and the rezoning request to NR3 would enhance the public health and safety and welfare. In fact, it would endanger public health, safety, and welfare, especially on Holland Court, where you're gonna increase traffic incredibly. Right now, there's probably 30 to 40 cars a day go down Holland Court, either up or down Holland Court. If you assume that there's one and a half cars per unit on this development, that's gonna be 300 and, well, there's 311 spaces they're gonna have. That's one and a half parking space per unit. So let's assume each one of those is taken with a car. Half of them are gonna come out onto Bridge Road and half of them are gonna come out onto Holland Court. So that's gonna be 155 cars coming onto Holland Court that don't currently do that. Some of those are gonna turn right and go to Ridge. But if they're going to Yellowstone, Powder House, Converse, they're gonna go turn left, they're gonna go down Holland Court to Canyon, turn left on Story. So we're gonna increase the vehicular traffic potentially up to 300 vehicles per day on Holland Court. That is not enhancing public safety, health and welfare of the people on Holland Court. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any further public comment again regarding item number 18, the proposed uh, annexation on second reading? Mr. Remmons. Mr. Chairman, through you, I would just like to follow up on the sewer and water again. I, I believe I spoke to it when we met at uh, the public hearing, but I have a memo from Bryce Door on September 2nd of 2022. Uh, where they analyzed the sewer capacities downstream from this uh, area for uh, different projects, including this one. And um, they noted that there would be some offsite improvements down at the bottom of Buffalo Ridge that would have to be included, um, but that the um, otherwise the, the um, system could handle the um, load from this development. So just wanted to make it clear of uh, the of what we said at the public hearing meeting about the sewer and water. Thank you, Mr. Emmons. Any further public comment again regarding item number 18? Seeing and hearing none, do we have any hands raised? Okay. Um, at this time, the chair would entertain a motion from the committee. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. Uh, moved by uh, Mr. Seagrave, seconded by Dr. Rennie. Um, any questions, comments, concerns from the committee? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave. What we're talking about right now is annexation. What we've heard so far is on zoning. Cars, traffic, sewer, all of those things have to go to the zoning. The question we're going to discuss right now is, should this be a part of the city? Do we want to develop it as a city project or leave it in the county? So that's where I'm focused right now is on annexation. Thank you. That's a good point, uh, Mr. Seagraven. I think you uh, put it more eloquently maybe than I've I've attempted to a few times this morning. So. Um, anyway, uh, for the questions, comments, or concerns from the committee. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Rennie. I'd like to echo my colleague from Ward 2. If you look at this area, it's going to develop. I mean, the area across the road, Thomas Heights has developed. The area south of Thomas has developed recently. It will be developed. 
And the only question is, does it develop within the city or within the county? Currently, the only reason it's 77% contiguous and not 100% contiguous is that the little portion on the bottom on the south end of this is not being annexed that I can tell. So the question before us again is, do we want to develop in the city or do we want to develop in the county? If we allow it to develop in the county, then we've created a county pocket. And as many of you have read in the media, we're trying to resolve the issue with county pockets that we have in town um, on the east side of town, and we have no interest in creating another one. So I've not heard a reason why we this should not develop within the city. I will support the annexation. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. Uh, any further questions or concerns from the uh, committee before we call for a vote? All right. Um, all those in favor? Those opposed? No. Um, we have uh, Dr. Dr. Rennie and Mr. Seagrave in favor. Um, Mr. Laybourne is a no vote, um, and the chair uh, is not casting a vote. Uh, the recommendation uh, for next Monday's city council meeting uh, is for approval of this ordinance on second reading. Uh, item number 19, please. Number 19, ordinance second reading. Amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from county A-1 agricultural and rural residential to NR3 neighborhood residential high density for land located southwest of the intersection of Ridge Road, Road and Holland Court. And chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom, Planning and Development Director. Uh, this is directly related to the previous item. Uh, this is the ordinance that establishes the zone district for the property. As you frequently hear at the uh, governing body meetings, the mayor states we're annexing land. We must establish a zone district, which is required. Um, with the zone district, um, it does follow the exact same ordinance process. Um, as an annexation, and we do require that the applicant give the notice to all residents or all, all property owners within 300 feet of the area proposed for zoning. Uh, this area is shown as urban residential on the City of Cheyenne's land use plan that's called out in Plan Cheyenne. Um, also, properties to the north south and the west are also uh, shown as urban residential they're the same land use uh, category uh, to the east it is shown as urban transition residential which is a county designated uh well it's a it's a designated land use plan that was adopted as part of the joint plan chain document um, document and also urban residential um, this urban residential land use category allows for a variety of residential zone districts, including HR, which is the one, or HR, um, NR3, which is the one that is requested by the applicant, NR2, uh, also MR residential, which is uh, located to the north and to the uh, west. Um, in all of those zone districts, multifamily. Uh, development is a permissible use. Uh, the only difference with the NR3 zone district that is requested is it does not uh, require that it go through an additional step of Board of Adjustment review and approval as a conditional use. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this at their meeting on January 3rd. Um, there were uh, several members um, of the public that were in attendance um, that did um, speak in opposition of this development. Uh, the Planning Commission ultimately made a recommendation uh, to you all to deny the application, citing that it did not meet two review criteria. Those would be review criteria two and eight, which were mentioned by the uh, previous commenter. Um, those review criteria, number number two, references compatibility with nearby property, specifically considering existing zoning and the comprehensive plan and other official plans and policies created under the guidance of that plan for these areas. And number eight, uh, that is uh, whether the application will harm the public health, safety, or general welfare. In the staff's Planning Commission staff report, which is attached to your agenda item, uh, city staff did evaluate uh, this zone change 
for conformance and compliance with those review criteria. And we did find that this does uh, conform and comply with um, all review criteria necessary for annexation. Uh, something I would like to note regarding just land development patterns. Uh, Ridge Road is a uh, minor arterial street, is a major north-south street in our community. Story, which is one block to the north, that is a minor arterial street as well. It's a major east-west corridor through the community. Um, both of those uh, corridors lend themselves to um, increased density to be developed along those corridors. They can utilize facilities such as um, existing greenway infrastructure that has been installed and potential um, expansions to um, mass transit or transit in the area. Um, uh, rezoning to a multifamily zone district in this area um, is something that uh, probably lends itself it does lend itself to um, some of the more efficient use of existing developed infrastructure that's in the community. Um, again, just to remind you, the Planning Commission did recommend a denial um, of this for uh, failure to find that at MED criteria two and eight. Um, staff has included in their staff report uh, justification uh, for um, as to how it uh, meets that review criteria. Um, I should. Uh, Note one more um, item. Uh, Wyoming State Statute 151603 um, does provide specific provisions um, in the event of a protest by uh, residents residing within 140 feet of a proposed area for rezoning. And this measurement excludes uh, platted and dedicated rights of way, such as alleys and streets. Um, if there's a formal protest that would be received by the city clerk's office, at least 20% um, of the owners um, within 140 feet of that zoning, um, if, if that number is met, then it would require that the governing body pass this ordinance by supermajority, which means three quarters vote, which would be uh, seven members would have to uh, vote in the affirmative for this ordinance to become effective. In the event uh, this ordinance is voted down and the annexation continues, um, there would be a fundamental problem of land without zoning. Uh, so we would encourage the governing body to establish a zone district of some sort um, at this location. Um, any zoning that is a deviation downward uh, would be acceptable. So that would be anything lesser than our multifamily would be something that is acceptable um, under this scenario. I'm open for any questions that you may have regarding this item. Questions uh, from the committee for Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chair, go ahead. Through you. Um, Director Bloom, you just discussed the availability of Story Boulevard Ridge. Um, I'm thinking of some other areas in our community where we have approved multifamily housing recently. Converse Avenue, currently building a 500 unit uh, apartment complex. That's on a, that, is that a minor or major arterial? And Chair three to council matter. members, it is a minor arterial as well. Similar to Ridge Road. Correct. Uh, across the street from there is a developed apartment complex with probably similar in size to this unit, uh, proposed unit. So right there we have 700 apartments. Uh, another recent development I can think of is on uh, uh, near Albertson's, um, I believe that apartment complex was just completed. Uh, I can't, I don't know how many units are there. Uh, but that is on Ridge Road as well, I believe. And Chair, that through you to Councilmember Seagrave, that is approximately 90 units. 90 units. Uh, Sweetgrass on the south side, this governing body approved 10 fourplexes uh, in a three acre, I believe it was three and a half acre uh, density. So it would be uh, less total units, but the density would be similar at least. Um, and that's near um, College Drive, another minor arterial. 
Chair three to Councilmember Seagrave. That is a principal arterial. Principal. Next okay. step up, yes. So I, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is from a logical standpoint, if we don't approve apartments that are on a major road like this, where would we approve them? I mean, I don't really want to approve them on a neighborhood street. Uh, can you imagine proposed 300, 300 autos in a neighborhood without a without a at least a minor arterial road to handle that traffic? So if we're not going to approve this, are we basically saying we're not going to approve apartments in the future? Is that where we're headed? Uh, the last I knew, we had a housing shortage, according to the local Chamber of Commerce, of over 3,000 living units. I don't know how we attack that without some multifamily housing. So that's the quandary that I, that I find myself in at this point. Uh, if not here, where would, where would we build these? So uh, I, I just wanted to give the, the public a, an idea of where I'm, how I'm trying to rationalize this. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Is there Chair, through to uh, Dr. Rennie, um, there is a buffer yard uh, requirement between those two uses. Um, I will need to look that up real quick, unless the applicant might happen to know that from their experience with developing a site plan so far. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will, I'll be able to get you that information in just a moment. Further questions uh, from the committee for Mr. Bloom? Um, all right. Let you have the opportunity to research that, Mr. Bloom. Yeah. I'll go ahead and call Mr. Emmons up, see if he wants to make any comments. Uh, Chairman, committee members, Brad Emmons, uh, AVI agent for the applicant, and we also have the applicant here and the architectural design team. Uh, I'll probably start with going through the urban residential plan Cheyenne design standards, uh, a primary use within the urban residential section of the plan Cheyenne is apartments. Uh, it also speaks to that um, multifamily residential, these types of house, housing are generally served by collector and arterial streets um, and, uh, and in the future should have access to transit or transit centers. Um, that's uh, kind of where the process started in this uh, with the developer uh, of finding a zone and finding a use within that zone is by going to the plan Cheyenne um, documents. Charles also pointed out that uh, in the urban residential category, NR3 is an applicable zone district. Um, so um, as well, we, we do, we have started some design work or site plan work on this. Um, I mean, we are at the zone change. We provided some of this at an open house. I'd like to, um, provide this to the council in case the public calls and talks about it as well. So you have copies of um, of that. Um, within the, um, I will tell you that uh, we we did work with Jace at the developer. Um, the first layout we did look at was um, some other um, where we fourplex and other options. Um, it didn't really work and lay out on this property. When you go to apartments like this and three stories, you have smaller footprints, which gives you more space to have open space, more space for other um, amenities and those things. So um, in this area, any apartments that would go in in this area, the density requirements in the city of Cheyenne is 1,600 square feet per unit on a 10-acre lot. I think that comes out to about 300 um, units would be what would be allowed if you wanted to go to the maximum within the city code. Um, this uh, proposed site plan has 207 uh, units. 
Um, we did try to, um, with the work of the architects, so I want to give them credit uh, for some of this layout um, to try to eliminate blank uh, solid walls behind uh, the existing houses. We have angled the buildings on the western side so that they're not uh, perpendicular uh, with the property to um, help pull those buildings away. Um, we have also uh, submitted a traffic study for the 207 units that has been through the city engineer's office um, and uh, been reviewed by them as well. So um, I think I will stop at that point and let Jason um, talk unless there's some specific questions on this or I can come back up if. Um... Go ahead. Through you, uh, Mr. Emmons. I'm just. Curious, uh, I see an uh, entrance and exit onto Holland. Is that is that required? I know there. I know we have to have at least two, but can they both be on Ridge, or do we need one on Holland? Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, I think we could discuss that with the city engineer's office. There, there definitely cannot be two on um, Ridge uh, for spacing. Spacing requirements on a collector is supposed to be. 600 feet, I think, and and um, what we've done on the Ridge Road corridor um, was to line it up with a street. The, there's only one road eastbound, which is Harvey Street, so we lined it up so that we would have a normal uh, like intersection at Harvey and Ridge. Um, so that's that's the location of the access on Ridge is based on that. Um, there definitely would have to be a second type of access, whether that could be a fire lane um, or, but I would say that fire would be the primary um, push for multiple accesses. Um, we did at the open house, um, I've lost, I think it was Roger that was spoke earlier. We did, him and I did talk about seeing about moving that access a little further east, but we haven't, obviously that was last night. So um, those are the details we get into with the, uh, with the engineer's office on some things, but uh, yeah, but the, uh, like Ridge, I can pretty much say um, that would be the only access that would be allowed on Ridge unless we did do a some sort of emergency access. Um, I believe Tom is, um, the city engineer is on the meeting. So if I've misspoken, I'm sure he can correct me. Thank you. Mr. Cobb, city engineer. Would you like to make a comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The only thing that I might add is um, Mr. Emmons is correct. It, it's 660 feet is the minimum spacing. So um, we, we couldn't feasibly do that on Ridge itself. And again, as, as Mr. Emmons has indicated, we reviewed the traffic study and the information provided so far. We, we don't see anything that would be, um, I guess, um, alarming to us at this particular point. I did attend the meeting last night just for the benefit of the council to understand that. I wanted to hear the direct concerns of the public. And one of the things that was brought up is basically the canyon intersection with Story and the impact that might have to the neighborhood routing it out Holland. So what I indicated to them is as we move forward in this process, in the site plan process, We'll look at that in more detail, and if mitigation measures need to be implemented, we'll we'll make the developer pay their proportionate amount of that cost. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Um, any questions or comments from the committee for Mr. Cobb? Uh, yes. Do we? What are we doing here? Did you want to? Uh, did you have some clarification to provide? Because I, I would really like to to have the developer to have an opportunity. Oh, sorry. No, Chair, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Bloom. Chair, three to the committee, Charles Bloom, Plan Development Director. Just wanted to let you know what the landscape requirements are there. Since it is a multifamily zone adjacent to another multifamily zone, because MR does allow for duplexes, multifamily units, there is no landscaping buffer yard requirement um, directly related to the development itself for the buildings. Um, there is a Suncor easement that will have that separation. Now, since it would have over 250 parking spaces, 
there is a requirement that parking lots are required to be buffered from any residential units. And that buffer yard is a, at least an eight foot perimeter buffer on the, the rear side of the development. Um, and also a requirement that 5% of the internal landscaping area within the parking lot be landscaped and a further requirement that the parking area be reduced into smaller parking blocks. So um, indirectly, there will be landscaping requirements that um, typically will be located on the edge um, of the property, and there are other easements and restrictions that will force the development to uh, be outside of the uh, western edge of the, the property. Any uh, further questions for Mr. Bloom based on that uh, new information on landscaping requirements? Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Uh, do we have further developer report? Uh, Chairman, Council, Jason, Stephen, uh, Bedrock Development. And I do have a, I don't wanna take a lot of your time, um, I did put together a quick presentation, uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'll try to kind of grew as I was building it, but I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can. A lot of the issues I think have already kind of been discussed, so I may sort of skip through some. And I believe you'll get a copy of this um, after the meeting, so you're you know have some more time afterwards to to look through this on your own. Um, but you can go ahead and move to the next slide. So. Um, three things that I just wanted to go over real quick today is what this area currently looks like today, um, what's being proposed for the future, and then concerns that have been brought to our attention um, about this uh, project that are being addressed. As you've already seen, this is the area. Um, it's about 10.7 acres um, currently in the county, um, directly across Ridge and a little bit to um, the north, there's already an existing apartment complex that are, that's zoned um, the same as we're asking to be zoned here. I did put some letters and you guys can look at these later, but I did put some letters on this um, slide that indicate where the pictures were taken that are coming on the next slides. So this is a picture of 5908 Ridge Road, which is the vacant home that is directly across the street from um, the houses at Thomas Heights. This is a picture of uh, Holland Court. Um, the first picture on the left is looking to the west, and you can see some drainage issues there on the side of the dirt road that's Holland Court. And then the other picture is looking to the east from down Holland Court. Uh, this is looking uh, back to the west again on Thomas, and then the picture to your right is actually um, kind of on the corner of the property um, that would be the southwest corner of the property looking towards um, the south. And then these next three pictures that um, we can just, or a couple of pictures we can flip through are what the property looks like from the rear, so that would be from the houses that are to the west of the property. Um, so this is just a summary. We've already kind of gone and gone through this. Um, so you can go ahead and skip that part. Um, some of the community improvements that we believe this project will provide are annexing the county pocket into the city, providing sewer and water to the residents on Holland Court. So part of this project will entail us uh, providing future sewer and water availability to those homes that are on Holland Court to the south, or I'm sorry, to the north of the project. Um, improvements to Holland Court, so paving Holland Court, curb gutter, sidewalk. Uh, some improvements to Ridge Road, which includes sidewalk. Um, demolishing the abandoned and rundown home that sits on the property, so cleaning that up. I think we can all agree that doesn't look real great. Um, and then cleaning up the junk and dead vegetation that's accumulated on that property over the years. And then one last is improved drainage. I think you're going to hear some comments here in a minute about drainage on the back side of the houses that are to the west. Um, and 
as we talked a little bit yesterday at our little public uh, forum, was that we were more than happy to try to improve those, those drainage issues that are currently there. So this is just a quick elevation view of the apartments that um, we've been designing. And then these are some 3D drawings that Winters Griffith put together for us to show what the apartments would look like from the interior. And then, yep, yeah, there's a couple of that um, look from the backyards of the houses that are to the west. So this, this um, 3D rendering and then the next one show what the apartments would look like from that perspective. A real quick overview of the Ridge Apartments uh, community amenities. Um, they're currently planned to have a fitness center, community rooms with media and game rooms included, private meeting rooms, on-site leasing office, indoor uh, secure bike storage, secure package lockers for the, the tenants, a dog park wash area, outdoor recreation space, walking paths, and then our real hope is that we're able to supply in the back corridor area um, a swimming pool for the residents. Um, as far as the units go, um, right now we're planning on providing a very nice modern interior design, large windows with lots of natural light, private patios and balconies, um, obviously ADA units, um, air conditioning, uh, high-speed internet, video doorbells, a lot of the smart items that um, people are looking for in newer in newer apartments now, um, in unit laundry facilities, dishwashers, and pet friendly units. So, concerns. Um, basically, the five major concerns that we have uh, heard about during this process and have come up with on our own are increased traffic, sewer capacity, drainage, apartment design and building height and property values. Addressing the increased traffic, so Kimberly, Kimberly Horn, Kimmer, Kimberly Horn, <laughs> um, they completed the North Ridge Apartments traffic study in November of 2022. And based on that study, um, they've determined that uh, as long as stop signs are added at the exits of this project, that um, the existing roads would be able to handle the traffic. Uh, sewer capacity issues. Um, we did talk to BOPU. Brad talked about that a little bit, so I won't reiterate all of that, but they did say that there was capacity. Drainage. Um, we have been doing a drainage analysis. Um, our drainage design includes um, using detention and retention ponds. Um, the retention ponds do not necessarily mean the long-term retention. Um, there's a plan for landscaping and bioretention ponds on this project. Um, the Ridge Road Apartments drainage can be incorporated into the stormwater plan for the area that is east of Ridge Road. And the drainage problems on the west side, which I just mentioned a minute ago, of existing properties will also be addressed at this project. Um, I should probably have Ansley talk about this, but I'll try. You say it so much more eloquently than I do. Um, the apartment design. So we have spent a lot of time on how we've lined these apartments up on the property, angling them away from the adjacent property, trying to make them not in little boxes and squares, but to create more of a what I would call a curvilinear approach to the interior and from looking at the exterior. But the building design is done with the neighboring residents in mind. Single slope flat roofs are used to limit the overall height of the buildings by as much as 20 feet. The flat roof design also provides space for mechanical units limiting noise and unfavorable views of mechanical yards. Buildings provide private balconies for all the tenants, including a private entrance for the ground level tenants. Buildings provide human scale and intimacy at the ground level for all pedestrians, which helps create a sense of community. And then private balconies limit the visibility of personal items from neighboring homes while providing privacy for the tenants. Um, property values, this is a touchy situation, a touchy topic, um, but I have done quite a bit of research on this and 
I could go through this, probably take two hours of your day, but I won't. But one study from Harvard um, has indicated, and as it says on the third line, that they found that large, dense, multifamily rental developments do not negatively impact the sales price of nearby single family homes. Um, I found this in multiple studies. I would be happy to sit down with anyone and run through those studies and how those were performed. But, um, you know, another thing that came out of that report was that property located and constructed, properly located and constructed multifamily projects with attractive landscaping and entranceways, which I do believe we have here, can actually raise the overall value of the detached homes relative to their absence. This is gonna be hard for me to read from the distance, but I did go through um, Cheyenne and I looked at a couple of different areas where multifamily housing has recently been built. And then I went on to the assessor's website and looked at the values of those homes as reported on that website and how much they increased over the years. Um, these are just two examples of that. And as you can see, if you read through those, that the property values were not negatively affected. All of those properties, that were very close and adjacent to and even backed up to multifamily have increased in value. And in fact, they increased by more in value than the average on the years that those buildings were completed. So in summary, um, you know, a ridge development site and buildings are thoughtfully designed and take into consideration the surrounding property owners. Major concerns with the development have and will continue to be addressed throughout the design process. I think, I feel like we were kind of addressing a lot of things that get addressed later during the design process, which is fine. I think it's good to bring these things up as early as possible, but this is just the beginning. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And, you know, I, I have confidence that we can work with the city, the planning department and the engineers to make this project work. Um, Rich, oops, sorry, I didn't, almost finished. Ridge apartments will benefit Cheyenne and the surrounding community. I went through earlier, paving Holland Court, getting rid of the county pocket, all of those types of things. And then the NR3 zoning exists across Ridge Road. So that's all I have. Are there any questions? Thank you, Jason. Um, I believe Dr. Rini does have to leave for a patient, is my understanding. Yeah, thank um, you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize to everybody. I do have a patient scheduled at 2 o'clock that's been scheduled for several weeks now. So didn't want to move them. Um, I have read everybody's emails, and I'll be here Monday night to listen to you for the discussion. Thank you. Um, let the record show Dr. Rini is uh, exiting the meeting. Uh, any questions from uh, uh, the remaining committee members for the developer before I go to other public comment? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Jennifer, do we have any hands raised online? Okay. Um, before we start public comment, uh, I will say because we are uh, we are getting close to one o'clock. Um, if folks are amenable to this, if if uh, if you could limit your comments to, yeah. if folks uh, can can please try to keep your your comments within uh, uh, three minutes. Um, I think just because everybody's got a tight schedule today. I want to make sure everyone has a has a chance to speak who wants to speak today. So if, if folks are amenable to that, if you could limit your, your comments to three minutes, that would be appreciated. Like I said, there will be another meeting and, and more opportunities to speak on Monday night. And then two weeks from today, well, two weeks from yesterday, um, this meeting again, and then another council meeting. So there will be more opportunities. Uh, with that, folks, um, Public comment. Just a quick note that I will keep track of the time over here. So I'll give you like a one minute, like when you have about one minute left, okay? okay. My name is Charles Marsh. I live on Canyon Road, which is the first north-south through road just west of the, uh, the property. 
Um, I'm not adjacent to, I butted up against it, but I, you know, am, will be impacted by what all goes on around it. Uh, basically, I guess the big concern that I hear from most people and myself is the compatibility with adjacent property, because most of the property around it is single family homes. Personally, my, my biggest concern is the impact of traffic. They've determined the roads can handle it, but can the neighbors handle it? That's where I'm coming from is the amount of traffic that I see on my roads. Um, really what it comes down to is I do not want it zoned as any sort of uh, high density. I would like to see it single family homes, even duplexes, maybe even fourplexes. Um, it, it's not a matter of uh, I'm opposed to people living there. I would be more than happy to have more neighbors there. And uh, like I said, residential would be my preference. Um, purchased residence, but rentals are fine. I'm just opposed to the high density. My, the one question that I do specifically have is for instance, the sewer, it has been determined that it is at capacity. Is there any sort of this goes through and it turns out that wasn't quite right? Do the developers have any sort of uh, thing that they have to do to fix the problem if it turns out to be a problem? That's all. We'll go ahead and well, obviously, this meeting's being recorded, so I mean, we can follow up with BOPU about that, and I would assume um, um, maybe the the developers can can answer that uh, at next Monday's meeting. But uh, my understanding uh, from uh, what Mr. Emmons stated is that uh, um, BOPU, um, the name he he stated, is someone with BOPU, so they were the ones to assess it. But um, yeah, that's duly noted. Uh, we will make sure that we uh, try to have some follow up on that for the next meeting. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Go ahead, sir. John Cecil again, uh, 3217 Smith Place. And I've resided there for 24 years. Um, when we bought our property there, it was in a nice residential neighborhood, and that's what we thought it was going to be. Some of these other apartment complexes that um, you guys are talking about, I don't think are surrounded as much like the one over behind Walmart. That's not surrounded by um single family homes and so I, I don't think it's fair and i don't think anyone in a single family home neighborhood like we live in which is a really nice neighborhood would want a monster like this put in the middle of it and that's what i kind of look at it too i'm 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 not against development i really am not but i think it needs to be done right and i think it needs to be done without harm to others around it and so i think we need to take all that into consideration um, one of my biggest concerns, and I would invite you all to go drive over to this property and look on Thomas and Holland and how that land slopes to the west and how that's going to drain. Now, a little history to that. I'm, I'll try to keep it short and I'm not going to be able to cover all my points. But so when this was platted way back when there was single ha family housing that was platted beyond where it is now into this property and there was a street that was platted to come down where the pipeline is called grove there was another street that was going to come through to that was called smith court which is in the low spot right behind my house which i'm assuming they were intending to be able to take drainage out of there and into the neighborhood and out well when they started doing our subdivision redid the plat but it's still on the crestridge plat i have a picture of it i can show you if you need it um then they, the guy that had that 10, 10 acre piece, he didn't want to pay taxes on stuff that was subdivided for housing. So he wanted to turn to agriculture. So it was vacated. And at some time the pipeline was put in there. Um, and so right now we don't have big problems. We've had some back there where it came almost up to the fence and came over, but it's agriculture land. You start putting, you start putting concrete and pavement you're going to have more runoff and more flooding and more chances for that. Now, what their their plan was, they tell me, is that they're going to put fill in and they're going to raise that all so they can try to drain it all out towards Ridge Road. Well, that means they're going to have to go at least 10 or 15 feet above where it is now. That's going to be way above my back fence. Then you're going to have a three-story apartments going above that, looking all back into, into um, our yards and whatnot. Um, the, the traffic issue, I mean, if these are going to be luxury apartments, which 
who says, I mean, they build them as that, but if they can't rent them, they can turn them into whatever they want kind of apartments. Um, but people are going to, people nowadays have cars. If you have a three bedroom apartment, I will tell you, people are going to have more than one and a half cars per apartment. Um, and they're going to be parking on the streets, kind of like they do on that apartment complex on college. If you drive by there anytime, there's cars parked out on college because there's no room in the, in the, um, a uh, lot for them in there. Um, and so I see those those kind of issues as some of the big issues. But, you know, I disagree with the property values. I'm sure there are studies that say that, but... Go ahead and wrap up, Mr. Okay. Cecil, if you would. I will. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there's studies out there that show the opposite of that. Um, but, you know, the, here nor there. Um, but like I said, potential flooding, and, and if they do do all that, Phil, where's all that and, and gives away... Where's it going to go? Are they going to put retaining walls in there? Nobody can tell me. Nobody has a real plan. And I asked those questions before. And the first time we've seen a real layout of this was last night at the public meeting. They did have them. They were flashing up at the at the meeting before, but we weren't able to see those. So thank you. Thank you. And, and like I, uh, I'll just reiterate one more time. I mean, there there are going to be more opportunities to to speak, and and you are are certainly welcome to to email us as well, Mr. Cecil, with with more of this information if okay. you'd like. And I will be. <laughs> no, uh, thank and you. I, I just I just want to make sure folks know yeah. why you know we're we are we want everyone to have an opportunity to speak. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Chairman and Committee, Mark Stokes, 3201 Thomas Road. Just wanted to reiterate exactly what he just said were some of my concerns as well. Um, I did speak with Thomas Gibb last, or Cobb, I'm sorry, uh, city engineer last night about doing a study um, for Canyon and Story as well as Ridge Road for traffic. I, I understand that we, if we want to put apartments, we need them on, on main roads. But in this location, Story has been used I mean, nobody wants to use Del Range anymore. I get it. We all, if we work on the north side of town or we work on the west side of town, we use that, that road now. And with that elementary school that was just built there, uh, that two to three o'clock hours is a nightmare. Um, morning rush hour, if you're turning off of Canyon onto Story to go west, impossible. You're there for 10 minutes, sometimes longer, literally waiting for a window because you can't see up over the hill coming down into there. It's a bad situation. Um, Mr. Cobb said he was going to put cameras up there and do a study. Uh, I'm not for uh, Kimley. I can't remember the company's name that, that Jason hired to do the study on and the algorithm for how much traffic is going to be through there. 80 cars in the morning and 103 at the night rush hour. Um, that's pretty low. Like we said, there's going to be multi cars per complex or per per apartment. It's going to be a lot higher volume than what he's saying. And the two roads that we're speaking of although main arteries in Cheyenne, Wyoming are already at capacity when you're a resident in neighboring neighborhoods trying to get out to go to work. This is just going to add to it and everything else has been talked about and I'll talk about it at a later date, but thank you for hearing my voice. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Appreciate that. Um, come on up, Amber. Uh, my name is Amber Reagan and I live at 3225 Smith Place. Um, in reference to the rezoning, I just want to make a note that um, the apartment building that there that is there on Ridge and Story, it is zoned for the what they would like to zone it for, but it's only 60 apartments. Also, I kind of want to bring up if you were going to rezone for high density in that area, have you ever shopped at King Supers? Walmart tried to park in there. Um, that's going to add how many more people, especially with Converse, with the apartments there, with 600 plus apartments that are being built there, how much is that gonna impact those businesses and the individuals that shop there? Thank you. Thank you. Um, come on up. I hate public speaking. No, um, I understand. I saw you take a deep breath. It is fine. We are not gonna bite you. I so. know. No, feel, but this feel is a very ahead. emotional um, topic for me. I live at 3222 Thomas Road. Pardon me. Ma'am, ma'am, could you identify who you are, please? Yeah, so we can... And I live at 3222 Thomas Road. I've lived there for 20 plus years. And I believe what I am speaking to addresses criterion eight, which is the public health and safety and welfare. And I have spent the last week visiting with neighbors throughout that area. 
and most of them were unaware of this development proposal, and 100% of them were opposed to putting up apartments. They were in favor of single family homes. And the reason against the proposed apartment complex were varied, but held a common concern, the impact of 400 to 500 people in a 10 acre plot on the current neighborhood. Whether the current residents are retirees such as myself or young families raising children, the concern was the same, losing what we value most about our neighborhood, a quiet, peaceful and safe place to live. No matter how carefully planned a neighborhood is on paper, there is no way that such a huge amount of people in such a small area won't change what we have. This includes all of the concerns that have already been talked about, the traffic, the noise, the light pollution, the, you know, the good old um, drainage that I don't understand. A lot of the younger families were concerned about the safety of their children and also the overcrowding of the schools. Um, a lot of the ladies had said they had moved to that area specifically for the safety and well-being of their children, and they felt very threatened by these the changes that are proposed. We don't expect the developer, developers of this project to care about our concerns, but we do expect and, and hope that you all as our representatives do care about us. I have been told that this expectation is unrealistic, that you all really don't care. And, you know, I, I, I hope that this impression is incorrect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, further public comment. Now's, now's the time. Dr. Alexander, 3212 Hall and Court again. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. I thought I was addressing this, the, the rezoning when I spoke earlier. So you've got it recorded. I'm not going to go through it again. I'm not opposed to the development of that parcel, but I am opposed to rezoning as NR3 and developing it into a really dense housing project. Thank you. And that's duly noted, Mr. Alexander, um, and and that's fine. Certainly, that you made you made the comments on that. Um, we just try to try to keep them. We just try to keep the the discussion germane to the specific topics. Um, so, but anyway, thank thank you. Um, further further public comment for those who haven't had an opportunity to to first speak. Yeah, I mean, go ahead if you'd like. Yes, I have that, and I was actually going to. I, I, I can read it in. If, From if Peggy and Tony. Well, uh, maybe not. I mine is from an uh, A Escamilla. Yes, thirty-two to thirty-one Smith Place. Okay. Yeah, if you'd like, if you'd like to read it in. Okay. To the record, I would. I'll, 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 I'll totally allow really that. Would. <laughs> Thank you. Um, her letter states. Do I need to give her, give you her name again? Okay, okay. Um, she has lived at 3231 Smith Place for 25 plus years with single family homes in all directions. The proposed 10.7 acres for rezoning up to NR3 is literally right behind her back fence. The proposal for a 207 unit apartment complex with garages, clubhouse, exercise area, blah, blah, blah. is a very small area for a minimum of 400 plus people, plus around the same number of vehicles. How many of you would like this right behind their backyard fence? The primary issues include, and I won't read them again because we've all talked about them. Um, one of the concerns though that hasn't been brought up is the retention ponds, which are breeding grounds for mosquitoes and also end up kind of being dumping areas for trash. In regards to renters, they have no ownership or investment in the neighborhood and no longevity. As a result, there'll be a fairly regular turnover of rent renters who do not become members of the neighborhood. This contributes to the deterioration of the apartments in the neighborhood. 
The number one concern is what this will do to the value of our home and our neighbor's homes when it becomes time that we might have to move. Why should some investor try to get the most out of his investment while in destroying the investments we have in our homes and properties? It's only greed. I can't imagine anyone wanting to buy in the area with this in their backyard. We elected you members of the city council believing you will act in our best interest and not that of big development corporations who appear to be motivated by greed and not improving the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and, and to acknowledge us, we, we did all receive that from her on, on two separate occasions. Um, yeah, the end of last week, and then I believe I believe yesterday, we at least I received it twice. And I think it went to the entire city council. Um, okay, further public comment. Jason, did you want to? Uh, okay. If you'd like. Chairman, council, I just wanted to bring back up that we're not submitting a development proposal at this time. This is for annexation and zoning. Um, those processes happen after, and we would work with the city on, on doing that. Um, also, just wanted to say that Cheyenne does need multifamily. This does provide a needed, and we've done several studies to, to determine this, it does provide a needed residence, you know, residence for the town. Um, just like to remind everyone of the Cheyenne land use plan and that this fits into that. Um, and we did, I know that's been brought up a few times about a different zone or looking at single family. Um, we did look at all types of options for this property. And we started with the single family option. Unfortunately, because of the size, how it's located, access, um, drainage issues, single family just is not an option for the small of a parcel. And in order to um, be able to add in the Ridge Road improvements, the Holland Court improvements, the sewer improvements, um, it has to really become more of a multifamily project in order to be able to absorb those kind of improvements to the surrounding area. And that's it. Thank you. One last time. Further public comment. Public comment. Come on up, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Paul Ricketts. I actually reside in uh, Thomas Heights on Harvey Street. Um, I do have some concerns with traffic. Um, there's already an issue with traffic coming through Thomas Heights, crossing Thomas Road. There's been multiple requests for speed bumps and things of that sort. And now you're going to have another artery coming through Harvey, the fastest way to get out, a road that's not built for that or meant for that. This is an entire, and I appreciate what the developer said, but the point is, is developer or not, or development discussion or not, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this proposed development. So it's kind of hard to separate all of these issues. You kind of almost have to address them as one. However, there are plenty of places in Cheyenne and Laramie County, I think that you can find places to build multifamily residences of this type. Putting something into an existing neighborhood, um, mine's not as old, but it fits in with what has been in Crest, View, Crest Ridge across the street. I guarantee you, if those apartments were being built when I decided to purchase my house there five or six years ago, I would have passed on that neighborhood. And I think that'll be the way it is in the future. Um, it doesn't fit the style of the housing. It doesn't fit the, the, um, the lifestyle and the expectation that the residents in that area have basically sunk their dreams into. And so I would like you to take that into consideration and to keep an open mind on that. Certainly we need to develop, but there's a lot of places to develop. A lot of the apartments that have been mentioned, I think uh, I haven't been to all of them, but quite a few aren't butted up to houses that have been there for 25 years. Um, so those are a lot of my concerns with the uh, proposed uh, zoning for this area again i'm fine with single family smaller units but uh this huge thing that you will drive up over the hill and see all of this standing up um i'm not for that i don't think the neighbors are for that and unfortunately based upon the notification requirements i think a lot of people in that neighborhood don't even know about it it's through word of mouth 
you know, if you're going to stick your notices to 150 feet, 140 feet or something like that, that's not very far for a project that's going to affect an entire neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Last call. Public comment. Any raised hands? Um, Mr. Chair, I just would like to um, let those folks on Zoom, this is a reminder, we haven't had this issue for quite some time, but we do not take public comment in the chat room on the Zoom function. So we did have one comment there. Um, it's not our policy to note it. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of that going forward. Well, if that person would like to take the opportunity to uh, make their public comment um, before we move on, we'll certainly allow them to do that. But that is a, that is a good reminder. Um, Alicia, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hello. I just wanted to say I live on 3204 Holland Court. Ma'am, could you identify who you are, please? Alicia Croats. Thank you. And I wasn't able to get in today, but we looked at the proposed um, layout and how many people there is going to be. And we just recently bought our house not a few years ago with the purpose of having a quiet, calm neighborhood. And their outlet goes straight onto our street, which they will be going up and down Holland. They're going to try and bypass story as much as they can. And I just feel like it's going to ruin the whole neighborhood and the safety of our neighborhood. Um, and just the fact that they can put so many like apartment buildings on one lot is just crazy to me. And the drainage and everything else that everybody else has talked about. I just wanted to make sure I had a comment. Thank you very much. We we appreciate your comments and I'm glad you uh, stuck around uh, to provide those. Thank you. Okay, seeing and hearing no uh, further public comment. Um, at this time, the chair would entertain a motion from the committee. We have a motion. Mr. Chair, to get it on the floor, I, I will move to approve. Second. Uh, this item, this proposed ordinance on second reading, uh, we have a motion uh, by Mr. Seagrave, seconded by Mr. Laborn. Uh, further uh, discussion from the committee? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave. Through you, I'm not sure which staff person this should go to. Um, I believe it was Mr. Marsh that talked about uh, duplexes and or fourplexes would be maybe not desirable, but better than uh, what we're looking at. Uh, what type of zoning would we need in order to, to accomplish that, the fourplex? Is that is that the same zone we're in right now? Go ahead, Mr. Bloom, please. And Chair, committee members, to answer Council Member Seagray's question. The zoning MR would accommodate uh, townhouse units, uh, duplex structures as well. Yes. That is the same zoning that is uh, within the neighborhood to the west. Um, and the minimum lot size for uh, townhouse units is 2,500 square feet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Anything further, Mr. Seagrave? Further questions and comments from the committee on this agenda item? All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Those opposed? Uh, there will be no recommendation uh, going forward, um, Madam Clerk, because uh, we had two, two no votes, and even if the chair wanted to, uh, wanted to vote, um, really wouldn't make any difference. So the chair is not going to cast a vote. Uh, there will be no recommendation um, on the on this item for next Monday. Thank you. Um, thank you, folks. Um, you are certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you want to take the opportunity to, to go, you are certainly able to do so. We appreciate you all being here today. Thank you. Thank you.
Item no. number 20, Madam Clerk. Number 20, ordinance second reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located east of Southwest Drive and north of I-80. Wait, we have a staff report. Chair, members of the committee, Connor White, Planning Development Department. The annexation before you uh, is just west of Southwest Drive and north of I-80, uh, the interstate. Property is continuous to city limits on both the west side and the north side for the most part. Um, this property is currently undeveloped within the county. It just has two billboards on it. And in the county, it is zoned light industrial. So the zone change, which is our next item, I will go into that when we get there. Um, but with this annexation, it does meet all the criteria to be annexed into the city. Um, and staff does recommend uh, approval of this annexation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, questions uh, for staff related to this uh, proposed annexation? Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, do we have a developer's report? Mr. Hansen. Good afternoon, Shane Hansen, Style Surveying Services Agent for the owner. Next media, uh, the property owner is annexing this in. They're gonna be doing a billboard upgrade and typically, and that's basically it. They're just gonna annex it in and do a, and acquire, excuse me, request a billboard upgrade if they have not in plan. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments for Mr. Hansen? Okay. Further public comment uh, what's in the room here on uh, item number 20. Uh, do we have any hands raised, Jennifer? Okay. Seeing and hearing no uh, public comment, the chair would entertain a motion. One move, sir. Uh, moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Um, further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The recommendation for item number 20, this ordinance on second reading, will be for approval at next Monday City Council meeting. Uh, next item, please. Number 21, ordinance second reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from County LI Light Industrial to LI Light Industrial for land located east of Southwest Drive and north of I-80. Uh, Mr. White, I bet you're here to talk about this corresponding zone change, aren't you? Yes, Chair and members of the committee, Connor White, Planning and Development Department. The zone change before you is in correlation with that previous annexation. So as mentioned previously, and at any time we have an annexation, we need to give that a city zone. Um, it's being proposed to be light industrial, which is the current uh, county zoning. To the north of that is a park. Uh, it's a county park that is zone P. And then over to the west, it is all light industrial. And even south of I-80 is light industrial as well. Um, on the future land use map, it is proposed to be open space and parks, but with private land, we cannot uh, zone private land P public. So going with light industrial makes more sense in this case. Um, and as the applicant mentioned, it's just gonna be with the billboards. Um, so that also fits within the light industrial. Planning Commission did recommend approval of this, of this item and staff recommends approval of the zone change as well. I'm available for any questions. Any questions from the committee for uh, Mr. White? Thank you. Mr. Hansen, did you have anything you wanted to, to add? Okay. Further public comment? Seeing and hearing none here in the room, do we have any raised hands, Madam Clerk? I'm on item 21. No, you're good. It's been a long meeting. You're good. Um, all right, seeing and hearing no public comment, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, further questions or comments from the committee uh, regarding this proposed uh, ordinance uh, zone change on second reading? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Those opposed? 
The recommendation uh, for next Monday city council meeting uh, for this ordinance on second reading will be for approval. Next item, please. Number 22, ordinance second reading, vacating West 19th Street, west of Grant Avenue, City of Cheyenne, Laramie County, Wyoming, located south of Old Happy Jack Road, west of Missile Drive. Mr. White, you're back again so soon. I am. I'm covering for Seth Lloyd. So, okay. uh, all right. The street vacation before you, it's for a portion of West 19th Street uh, that was originally platted with uh, Central Edition in 1890. The street was never built. Uh, um, no, I believe. I believe we are on 22. Um, the last two, Mr. Okay. Seagrave, were the, no, I just, I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm clear as well. I believe the last two were the annexation and the, and the zero change. No, you're good. I, I thought I might've missed, missed something. Um, go ahead, Mr. Okay. White. Not a problem. Uh, so the street was never built uh, to a typical street standard and the lots surrounding it have not utilized it for access. Uh, the lots to the south were under one ownership and consolidated by previous platting actions. The lot to the north, uh, the lots to the north are also consolidated under one ownership, and it's a construction building that uses Old Happy Jack and the street to the east of that property as well. Uh, the property utilizes, or sorry, uh, the street is not connecting to any other existing rights of way, uh, but would be required to be built with future development actions if it was to remain. Uh, city staff has uh, the petition here to vacate this portion of the street. Um, the city doesn't need that portion built. Uh, we do, there is a developer to the south that is planning to build out that subdivision, but there will be other street networks through there that will still provide connections uh, that will lead out of that area. So if the street was to be built, it would most likely be a dead end street. So the city is looking to just vacate this portion of right of way. Um, Planning Commission did recommend approval of this vacation and staff recommends approval of the vacation as well. I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, any questions from the committee for uh, Mr. White? Thank you. Mr. Emmons, are you here for a Developer report. Yeah, Chairman, Council Members, Brad Emmons, AVI, uh, agent for the applicant um, with along with the city is you will see this. The back 40 is going to planning commission in February, um, which is the adjacent property owner to the south. And this vacated right away will be incorporated into the, a lot. And then Grant Avenue will extend down and it will make it a lot more clear when the when the plat map comes before you, if it makes it through planning commission in February. So. Just wanted to let you know what was going on. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Mr. Emmons? Further public comment uh, here in the room? Any hands raised, Madam Clerk? All right, uh, seeing and hearing no uh, public, com public comment. Again, we are on uh, item number 22. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, moved by Mr. Seagrave, uh, seconded by Mr. Laborn. Uh, further questions or comments uh, from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation for this ordinance on second reading uh, will be for approval next Monday night. Uh, item number 27, please. Number 27, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to sign a final plat for the Maltese Cross situated in the west half of section 16, township 13 north, range 66 west of the 6 p.m. and including a portion of public right-of-way dedicated with Sweetgrass, 7th filing, Cheyenne, city of Cheyenne, Laramie County, Wyoming. Go ahead, Ms. White. Chair, members of the committee, Connor White Planning and Development Department. The final plat before you is for the Maltese Cross. Uh, you probably recognize a portion of this as council did approve the preliminary plat on December 27th. Uh, the final plat before you is to just final plat two of the lots. Both those lots would be utilized for a new fire station adjacent to Sweetgrass Drive. Um, 
uh, with the preliminary plat, there were conditions placed on it. Uh, the first condition being just some updates to one of the notes to make this an ingress, egress, and drainage easement only. That condition has been met with this final plat. The second condition uh, did not need to be addressed with this final plat as it is outside the plat boundary and will be addressed later with subsequent, uh, subsequent plats when the park potentially comes in for a final plat. Um, Planning Commission did recommend approval of this final plat. Staff also recommends approval of the final plat. I'm available for any questions. Any questions from the committee for Mr. White? Go ahead, Mr. Seagrave. My, my only question is, do we need to do anything with the prior conditions? Uh, Chair, through you, uh, to answer Councilman Seagrave's question. Nope. So we don't have to address any of those um, conditions because as part of the review criteria for a final plat, they're supposed to address those conditions moving into the final plat. Um, so it's basically just approving the final plat. Uh, further questions? Uh from the committee for Mr. White. Thank you. Do we happen to have a uh, developer's report? Do we have any, anybody online? No one here? Okay. Uh, any further public comment? Okay. Uh, no developer and no further public comment. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, further questions or comments uh, from the committee on this proposed resolution? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The recommendation. Um, of the Public Services Committee will be uh, to adopt this uh, resolution at next Monday's City Council meeting. Uh, last item, please. Number 28H, Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Cheyenne and Dozer LLC to authorize filing of, plat of platting applications for city-owned lands for the purpose of access and future development. Mr. Bloom. And Chair, members of the committee, Charles Bloom, Planning and Development Director. Um, the title pretty much summarized what is going on here. Um, this is actually a document to allow us to be signator on a plat application that is being run in conjunction with the back 40 subdivision, which is related to the vacation that you heard um, earlier on this agenda. Um, specifically, what this would do is this would allow for the platting or the replatting of the lot that we own to the west of the ice and event center to allow for additional um, right of way to be dedicated for the northern half of paul smith way uh, this this authorization um, is similar to ones we've had in the past would involve city land unified development code requires that all landowners sign as applicants on these subdivision applications um oop, we <laughs> We're going to share a screen image of the um, area, but the computer we're going to use um, happened to die. I'm open for any questions that you may have regarding this application, or sorry, this MOU. Any uh, questions uh, from the committee for Mr. Bloom? Thank you. Uh, further public comment, do we have any hands raised? Okay. Uh, seeing and hearing no public comment, uh, um, the chair would uh, entertain a motion. Second. Uh, moved by Mr. Laybourne, seconded by Mr. Seagrave. Uh, do we have any uh, further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Um, what is the recommendation on this? Is this uh, acknowledged? No. To approve on an MOU? Okay. Uh, the recommendation for next Monday City Council meeting uh, will be for approval of this MOU. 
And with that, we have no further business on the agenda today. This meeting is adjourned.